Um, hello everyone, I'm David Ko, uh, Senior Engineer, Engineering Manager at Susan. I am from Taiwan, so I'm so glad to be here uh, because I joined the last time in uh, Detroit, but this time is more people <laughs> than there. So uh, I tried my best to share the, what the long is and how long works and the current, plan, the current status and the future plan, okay? Okay, so um, I will talk about what's a long home and the current uh, feature list and about the community momentum at the moment and the story and roadmap. Of, of course, the most important part is release. So I'll talk a little bit about release, uh, what we have right now and by this end of year. And inside the long home, I will also talk about the control plan, um, data plan, and about the data service, nature, backup, replica rebuilding, and of course, out of cost disaster recovery. And most important part, when you do a long home, and uh, when you're doing the upgrading long home, and everyone will care about uh, your service will get the impact. So also we'll explain a little bit about uh, volume live migration. And that's why it's what's next. So let's go over one by one. Okay, uh, so probably some of you already use a long home already. Uh, so basically, Longhorn is a highly available uh, software device uh, storage system for precision volume, especially uh, for uh, Kubernetes, for sure. And it's a lightweight because people come to our kiosk and always, always ask how to install Longhorn. And some of you bet, let's say, Longhorn is easy to set up. So this is the most uh, primary attraction items for users to start using Longhorn. And also, we provide a very simple UI so you can get understand how the volumes work in your uh, Kubernetes cluster. And of course, it's a precision volume. So it's a precision volume solution for any kind of Kubernetes. We mentioned some uh, destroy version and destroy type in our documentation. They mean those uh, distro, uh, distro actually verify in our daily regression. We have a daily regression to verify the each uh, maintain support branch for now, master branch for sure for the upcoming 1.5 and 1.4 and 1.3, we all, always run a, uh, a regression every day. And the next one, storage agnostic, because long uh, we want to make it easy to use all this uh, persistent for a rabbit card, your data will be on the host uh, file system. We try to simulate the long home si uh, disk on the file system. So that means you can prepare your uh, use it on your Lufa system if you want to try. But for your production, we have a best practice. So you need to have a dedicated uh, partition for each uh, long disk. A more detail, you can check the documentation. And the next one, like I say, we not just provide the in-cluster capability for volume, we also want to provide the out-of-cluster uh, capability for the uh, backup and restore. So let me, uh, you can set up the, the external backup uh, target, or we call it backup store. Uh, we support NFS and S3 interface. So you can backup your volume to external uh, uh, backup target, then restore to other cluster. And this one, uh, Long does not have any external uh, database for their status, uh, for his status persistent. We just rely on Kubernetes uh, native stuff, customer resource, and also all the application implementation way is based on a control plane pattern. If you are interested, you can take a look at our repo. Uh, it's a special long home manager. And this one uh, is open source for sure. And right now it's uh, incubating. We try to attract more contribution from the external uh, parties to help us to make long home grow, not just adoption, also in, uh, contribution. So to the goal is the same, we want to make graduation, so need your help, especially here, okay? So it is what's the long home uh, in general. And feature list, I will not go over all of them, but I want to say long already provide a, a primary feature when you want to use your production. And especially he verified by different, uh, on different Kubernetes distro, like I mentioned, uh, document in the, our documentation. And also for volume part, it provides a simple vision. You have a better strategy for your space efficiency. And he have an in-class snatch up and revert. 
And also, he has an out of class backup and restore. And for the volume itself, also clone and expansion. And some people uh, come, as I mentioned, these two days, uh, come to ask, does Longhorn provide encryption? Yes, we provide encryption. We based on the Kubernetes secret resource to provide your credential to encrypt your volume. And because Longhorn is the distributed block system, so every I.O. will be encrypted over the, over, the, uh, over the fly, on the fly. And also, uh, we, we call it encrypt, encryption in transit. And at the end, you will step into a rabbit court. So it's at rest. So it's by default right now. Uh, actually, we introduced in uh, one or two. And for rabbit cards, uh, we have a different rabbit card placement strategy. I want to mention cross zone is the uh, built-in functionality. We can make sure rabbit card on each node the zone, so you don't need to worry about the data loads. And of course, uh, replica rebalancing. Some, uh, some people you run a special run low hole on public cloud. They have some strategy to uh, down, up or down their nodes. They want to have a better level, a better, la a better balance for their replica when their node come back. So we also have this kind of capability. So uh, this is a lot of things. So uh, volume, uh, Kubernetes, and also uh, disrupting life uh, volume upgrade, all, all kind of things actually in the current long home version. And what I want to mention more is about uh, we also care about user. They want to use the, some automatic way to control their data. So we introduce a one uh, mechanism called uh, recurring job. So recurring job, you can make a recurring job for your volume or globally have a default recurring job. You can make a snapshot and back up. Or some type, some type of use case, they don't really care about the snapshot. Uh, so we introduce in one file, have a snapshot delete and clean up to save your space. So this is recurring job. And want to add more. For example, in one file, we also have a, for, uh, auto trim. It's a, a file system trim automatically. Uh, so it's the, uh, I think it's very useful for user because as a bug storage solution, it does not really recognize what's happening on the file system. So have an auto trim, it will be help you uh, to trim your file system automatically. Okay, so the last part is about, about the volume type, SS mode, and volume type, uh, we support the broad, uh, broad volume and file system volume at the moment, but I will share more about our plan for the third interface. And SS mode is a rewrite only and rewrite many for sure. And rewrite many right now become GA uh, in one fold. I uh, especially one fold is just released by end of uh, last year. And this row, we have uh, three type of this row already verified in our daily regression. And ARM64 also graduated to uh, GA uh, in one fold. So I, I want to hear more feedback about the usage. So if you have. So I think this is a general feature list. I want to talk more about the new stuff later. Okay, about Long Hong uh, momentum. And Long Hong keep growing. He's uh, like a several years project. Uh, I would say like a grow with the Kubernetes. So uh, right now, the uh, GitHub, a lot of feedback from the user. And also we hear uh, several stories about the uh, adoption, adoption uh, in production. And I, for example, payment uh, gateway, I just heard these days, and also H Telecom, this kind of thing is very interesting. And also some consulting company try to use a long home, build a, a solution for their customer and user. So this is quite outstanding and impressive. And also right now, over a world, uh, there's uh, about uh, 83,000 nodes running long home right now. So we have a pop public matrix, it's a matrix that longhome.io, you will get the information. It's keep growing, and over the time, start, uh, users start to keep upgrading the version to the latest one. And well, of course, after donate to a CNCF, we get a lot of uh, exposure to let people understand longhome, try to use. Okay, uh, long story, I want to uh, go over quickly uh, from the one three because we start have a new idea after after long home become GA and one one and one two uh, this kind of thing made the uh, the long home grows based on the user's feedback. Take example uh, from the zero three we start have uh, external backup store 
S3, and 06 uh, disaster recovery volume happened. And one that there were more volume capability also include, and one that one, I will start to graduate some experimental features, and one that two, encryption, and also uh, recurring job. And how about one three? It happened last, last year, June, and we have a Kubernetes. Uh, we want to make the user not just operate long home from the UI, we want to let them use the native way uh, through the customer resource. So we introduced the mutation webhook and also uh, a dimension webhook. And also we have a different type of version. V1 beta 1 is before version, and later we current version is V1 beta 2. And we want to enforce user to do a migration by themselves. So we have a conversion webhook to transit. If you have a V1 beta 1, you can correctly use the V1 beta 2 resource directly. So no need to do any menu operation. And storage network. So some uh, users, uh, they are want to have a separate uh, traffic for their control plan, for long control plan and data plan. So we have a uh, storage network based on motors. So, so user can set up their networking, uh, have an extra link to serve for different components in uh, long home. And public cloud. Because the goal for long home is run on uh, run anywhere, including public cloud or on premium. So we got some feedback from users. Uh, they are running the on public cloud like Azure or some some else. So we want to do something for that, especially like uh, upgrade. Because the public cloud distro the upgrade is, is a little different. It's not like, like no pool and no replacement, not in, not in place upgrade. So we want to do something for that. And also, user care about the cost when they're running on the cloud. So they, they usually will use the cluster auto scheduler, uh, auto scare. So we do something for that. And right now, we support it uh, as uh, experimental. And in one file, we want to make the cluster auto scale GA. And what, what's the criteria to make a GA? Of course, testing. So we are doing the testing to a three uh, major uh, distro, public cloud distro, and we want to make sure our our test three can all pace uh, in the in the in this those distro. And space efficient uh, snapshot purge, because people care about space efficiency. So we do a space efficiency snapshot purge. It's different from the snapshot deletion or something. You try to delete the first snapshot next to the volume head. So it's a new strategy, especially for the user not really care about a snapshot. And CSS snapshot, of course, for you for user, they can use the long home UI, they can use the customer resource, long customer resource, but we also want them to use the CSI. And CSI have a protocol for the snapshot, volume snapshot. So user can use the volume snapshot to do the in class long home volume snapshot. And also they can do the out of class the CSI snapshot for the backup. For now, and back image, yeah, we talk about volume, but why back image here? Because some volume will be based on the back image, a special virtual workload. So we want to do something for that, and also provide the user can download the back image. That mean you can export your volume as a back image, then download from the website. So provide another way to back up a backup strategy. Because right now we have a backup target, backup store, but you also can download the uh, back image from the volume directly. So this is another way. And security commu community amount of control and data plan. So you can we use a TRS. You can provide your public key and uh, your, your your keys. Uh, so we can do the security community. But it's option in, uh, depend on your configuration. And upgrade pace. We try to improve it. So after one three, I believe if you use the long haul, you will feel an upgrade uh, become faster because we do some uh, filtering. And, but important thing, how about one four? A uh, one four is released, I remember it's the last day of last year. <laughs> so, so we do have a lot of outstanding items. The first one is train. So right now you can train your volume. Uh, yeah, this is very important. We got a lot of feedback from users. And rewrite many got uh, GA. We introduce a recovery mechanism to make sure the when a uh, share manager is a rewrite many uh, engine, if you get it unstable in your cluster, when you come back, still will will prevent the data loss uh, for the connection. So this one already GA. 
a long system itself backup restore. And we support the volume backup restore, but some uh, feedback, they also want to make the long system backup and restore to keep the, the current setting. So we have that as well right now. And snapshot checksum. Um, people asking, be asked before, does the long haul have uh, some way to make sure the data is integrity, uh, this part? And prefer the one that four, we don't have an integrity. We use the revision counter. It's the easy way to make sure that everything is working well. But to serious, you want to make sure the data consistent really and data integrity. So we make our basic unit of a volume is essential, have a checksum capability. So to make sure everything is correct. And bureau protection. We also will leverage the checksum, snapshot checksum, to detect your, check, your snapshot of a replicas is incorrect. We will try to rebuild from the other health replicas. So this is already easy in the one four. And one dot twenty five. So everyone know one dot twenty five have a PSP drop. So um, that's a very critical issue uh, for many project. So for long haul the same. So we try to do that, and if you use the uh, Kubernetes version before 124, 1.25, long can support 1.4. If you use a 1.25 or even after, 1.4 can support. We have a setting you can configure, and we can respect uh, less settings to make the correct installation. And ARM CD4, like I say, he already passed our internal testing. And support bundle enhancement. We want to improve uh, the issue report from the community uh, users. Um, internally, we have a spring based uh, development workload, and we have a dedicated members every spring to watch and follow the community feedback. So, this is active. But I want to make it uh, efficient. So, how to collect the, uh, the support bundle from users, the issue will be very important for us. And we input this part uh, in one form. And online volume expansion. Uh, also, this is a request from the community user. And in one form, it's happened. And local volume. As you, as you know, our long home provides the volume replication. But sometimes, use case, uh, they user want to rely on application level replication instead of uh, blocks, uh, block volume replication. So we think about probably we can support in current architecture, provide a local volume to make your replica next to your uh, workload and just one replica. And we call it strict local. And for this part, it's still uh, the engine communicate with the replica, still go over the uh, network stack, but we use the uni domain Saki. So he said, uh, you save a lot of time to get the improve. However, we have a further plan for that because the current local volume is ba based on the current architecture, but we want to do something different in, the, in a later version. Okay, the important part is one file. It will be happen in June. And what thing will happen? Uh, we will introduce a new data engine. Right now, the data engine, current data engine is based on iSCSI stack, and you have some concern about the performance. So we want to do something based on SPDK. And this one, at least the layer three item want to achieve. The first one is replication. The second is snapshot. The third one is the degree volume. And this is the best functionality for the volume lifecycle and want to make it happen as an experimental. So cost auto scale, uh, this one will be, become GA. And instance major engine replica consolidation. Uh, if you use a long home, you will think about why long home instant major pod series consume a lot of resources because they are responsible for the, uh, your volume process. However, we have a separate instance major for the volume and replicas. So people will get confused when they, especially they're doing the upgrade. Because doing the upgrade, they will become the four instance major pods. We want to achieve the live migration to make sure your service without any interruption. However, this kind of uh, uh, re, uh, pods will have a de default uh, requ uh, CPU request. So user will, will concern about the request re resource, how it consume a lot. So in one, one file, we try to consolidate instance major engine and replica to one pod. 
So that means when you're doing the upgrade, the instant measure, at most, there are two parts, and also can ensure uh, your uh, volume migration without service downtime. Okay, okay like I mentioned, auto trim will happen. And the other part, not just rewrite only, rewrite mainly we also support uh, volume trim and auto trim. Okay, back image. I mentioned the back image before, and back image, you, you, you need to operate only two way, UI, long home UI, or long home uh, customer resource. But right now, we want to do uh, a long, that's conform to the standard interface, so we want to rely on the CSI. So volume stage, you can do a same um, way to manage your backing image. So this is something different. And backup, uh, backup store. Backup store right now support two interface. One is the uh, S3, the other one is NFS. And we, uh, again, community is very important. They give a lot of feedback for, uh, they want to have a CIFS and Azure. I heard about Azure, they want to do some storage tiering for the backup. So these two type of uh, uh, proxy will support in one file. In Kubernetes trend awareness and policy. Uh, actually, we already leverage PDB uh, part disrupted uh, budget uh, for the instant major in the current version already to make sure your volume will be safe when do the uh, no drain. However, in our documentation, we mentioned user need to exclude uh, some specific parts when they're doing the drain operation, especially like a CSI stuff or long home webhook component, et cetera. And I think we think this is still very tedious for user. We want user just uh, like a do the drain operation without any extra consideration, right? So this part will be automatic happen. We will handle, we will use the same mechanism PDB to protect those components. Uh, new uh, long home volume attachment. Right now, right now long have a lot of uh, logic to understand the volume stage or not, because some kind of scenario we will do an auto attachment, auto detachment, and sometimes you will be conflict with the user operation or workload operation. So right now, it's use an imperative way to consider the current status. What's the current status? but somehow still possible have uh, some corner case happen to make the attachment go into the wrong uh, correct condition. So we introduced a new uh, long home volume attachment, very similar to the Kubernetes volume attachment, but it's uh, led us to better handle a special auto attachment and uh, auto detachment, like a recurring job. Okay, recurring job. Yeah, as I say, recurring job, we have a backup and snapshot, and right now I have a snapshot delete and clean up. I, I can say one story because some of users run long home with the workload like a, a database and a special distributed database. And their database have a replication. They don't really care about a snapshot. They don't care about number of replicas. They just want to use other functionality from long home. So this uh, recurring job can make sure you can do something for you, this kind of workload modeling. So you can create a default a recurring job, a specific recurring job for your specific volume to do the uh, snapshot deletion and clean up, to clean up your unnecessary uh, specific usage. Okay, so this is one file, and I, I hope it will happen soon. Right now, the target is June, um, so let's expect. And long home release. And long home have a very uh, regular and consistent release cycle. For every year, we will have a two feature release so last year is 1.3 and 1.4, and this year will be 1.5 and 1.6. And for each uh, feature release, we will try to maintain it for one year. So for each branch, there will be three months, one patch. So you will see, for example, 1.3. Today, we just released 1.3.3 uh, to include some recent fixes. But we're still working on 1.4.2 next month, and also 1.5. So it's all ongoing. Even you use a 1.3 or 1.4, uh, you all support it. So, and we want to fix the issue, a special box, and, and, and small improvement in the current development. For example, we developing 1.5, we will definitely backport to 1.3 and 1.4 to make sure uh, you, your user experience is uh, consistent. 
across the different support uh, branches. Okay, so we talked about the long home uh, plan and roadmap uh, briefly. So let's talk about how long home works. And long home architecture is very straightforward. So if you think about, it's a request from the uh, PV, P, uh, PVC together with the, your workload. And long home will recognize, uh, rely on the CSI side card together with the long home. So we will create corresponding engine and replica. card. But what's the engine? Engine, you can think about the volume, the volume itself, together with the volume front end. And volume replica is your data. So for long home, by default, uh, default storage cards, we will have three replica for each volume. So that means when you create a volume, you will have a one engine for your front end and have a downstream replica, three replica. So that means your replica can be placed on the different nodes or even different disk. So when you have a one node down, and your part will get rescheduled by Kubernetes. So your volume will be immediately up because you still have a replica on other nodes. So that's it's a long home. So, so back to the uh, left side. So they have a control plane. Like I say, Kubernetes control, controller, CR, no other persistent service database. So just that's it. And data plane, data, data plane is the volume front end together with the volume engine. So the current front end is the iSCSI target. And also uh, volume replicas is the data. And volume life cycle, CSI, PV, and PVC, the same always align with the, the current uh, protocol. And data placement, right now low home disk, this is a terminology. Long disk is on the host file system. So each of the file system, you can create different uh, folder or even specific mount point for a specific disk for long home usage. But if you just a uh, new uh, beginner, you want to try long home, you don't need to have separate disk. You can dredge, just use your Lufa disk to try. So this is benefit you want to know about long home uh, to ensure time. Yep. Okay. So. Uh, what's actually running uh, inside the law of like a volume from or volume engine, this kind of thing. So if you talk about, I talk about the volume from end, it's actually we rely on iSCSI and kernel module iSCSI TCP. So this is why you need to install the open iSCSI to make sure you have a iSCSI initiator uh, to connect to the iSCSI target server created by long home for each volume. And for volume, we use, we have our own long home TGT. So he will together running uh, with a long home engine. And long home engine will have a um, data server and volume controller. The data server will, re re will get the traffic, receive the traffic, the IO traffic from the iSCSI target to, to write downstream the downstream replicas. And volume replica, it can be local next to your workload or even remote on different nodes. So can, can again save your data on your host disk. And this is best uh, volume um, like uh, connection relationship uh, uh, data plane for each volume. And however, you can have a uh, following data operation like snapshot, review, coils, uh, merge, prune, purge, backup, this kind of operation against your uh, volume. And actually, this kind of operation is happen, happen in replica level because the engine is a front end and replica is the real place for your data placement. Okay, so what I'm talking about is the current stack, but how about SPEK, what we will do? And SPEK, we already could for a while, but based on the current resource, we try to pay our, our, do our best to make it happen. So. SBK is especially you are very care about the IO performance and your environment have a good resource for this kind of setup. So this is why I mentioned using the high performance uh, application. And here have a concept like a BDEV uh, broad device. You can upstream the BDEV and, the, and the stream the BDEV to connect together to make your uh, broad level happen. And also, you can expose the BDF as a remote broad device. The protocol you can suppose is iSCSI and ME and E over fabrics. And you probably were curious, you have an iSCSI, do we, do we want to switch to the current stack to, to SBK? No, we will not. Because we want to leverage SBK together with the ME and E over fabric 
to get a better performance uh, for this part. And also, uh, if you talk about long, long have a snapshot, simple vision, this kind of capability, how we can happen when we use it in this SPK. So we will use the SPK one uh, functionality is called logical volume. The logical volume is actually the trend of snapshot, the same as the long home, and also it provides simple vision. And you have a better asynchronous programming for sure and memory uh, usage. So this is SPDK. And compare, compared to a current architecture of a long home, so how it will look like. So volume fine will become the MVM over family. And we need to have an initiator for that. The good, good news is NVNE have a kernel module by default in Nadas uh, kernel right now. So you don't need to do any extra stuff. And volume engine, we will rely on SPDK TGT. It's not the long TGT D anymore. It's SPDK TGT. And long engine will be long home SPDK B dev. Uh, okay, so for the volume uh, replica, is actually the remote or local logical volume provided by SBK. So they mean they can do the following operation, snapshot, review, queries, merge, etc. So we try to use the same architecture. So when user use a long home, they can strictly understand, okay, the new architecture is actually the same as the current. Okay, so this is the purpose. And one five, yeah, multiple engine, SBK, uh, target for one five experimental is the, the primary item I mentioned. And one six, uh, feature parity, to make sure you have the uh, same capability with the current architecture. And this is the uh, database, and I just want to show up, and the rectangle part is the user uh, kernel space. So you can see the left side is the, uh, the current stack. You have a uh, several, uh, some uh, context switch between the user space and name space. But the right side, there's just a kernel space for file system and MBA over fabric, bar device, other than that, all user space. So you will get it uh, improved, and also based on the SBK design. So I will show some numbers about the performance later. Okay, let's go back to see how long home work, some primary use case. Like uh, this one is recent and fail over. When you have a pot, have a volume, and you will be have a replica engine, like I say, then everything is running, right? So the same for other workloads, uh, you probably have others. And this time, when you know somehow encountering no, no not ready due to some involuntary uh, situation, and your pots will be fail over to other uh, nodes. And because your volume have a replicas, so you will immediately launch the engine, new engine, to connect to the old replicas. Yep. So this this one, and what what the scene did not explain here. When you know combat, what's happened? Your failed replica will get reused. So we try to reuse the failed replicas as, as possible, uh, if it can be reused, and if it have some delta change. Uh, between the new or healthy replica, we will try to do the delta uh, sync. So this is uh, resilience and failover. And the interesting part I want to share, uh, right now we are doing some negative testing in our cur uh, daily regression. Uh, because right now our testing is, all, is about a 200 to 250 test case. We are trying to do in introduce this kind of test case, like a no down or try to uh, break your si the system to make sure the volume behave correctly. So we are doing something automatically. Okay, control plan. Like I say, all the things running on Kubernetes. So CSI is a primary interface special for dynamic provision volume. So you will talk with the long manager is our control plan to do the other operation. So all the persistent stuff will serve into the Kubernetes API server as a customer resource. Yeah, that's it. But except the CSI plugin, it's headless, right? It's not the user interface. So user can use the long-home UI or even use the long-home CR. They will go over the long-home API. But before that, I did not describe here. We have another layer on top of long-home manager is the Kubernetes uh, admission webhook. So he will make sure the behavior will be the same. Okay. So this is a current implementation. And I also got 
uh, ask some question about the zone. Yeah, Longhorn have a support for zone for sure. So you can make sure your rapid card can be uh, distributed to each zone. And if your zone have some problems, you can still have a rapid card layer. Snapshot. The snapshot uh, is, is the same. We have a, for each volume, we have a snapshot chain. So take example, you have an empty volume and you start have some data into and you try to do a snapshot. And when you do a snapshot, the new volume head will be created. And uh, the old volume head will become snapshot one. And the same, the following operation will be same. So that, that mean you can better leverage your, your space because it's a sparse file. So we try to do like a copy and write uh, stuff for the, for the volume. And what I say here is all same with the new uh, data engine by SBEK. The behavior, behavior will be the same. And volume backup. Volume backup, we try to backup the to the external backup store and based on the snapshot. So, and we use the reference count to make sure we don't have a like a um, redundant backup chunk in the remote uh, backup target. So this is what we achieve. And this part will not happen in a one file with the SPDK, but we want to achieve is part of feature parity in one six. Okay. And life migration, life upgrade. When you are running your system, you want to upgrade the uh, long home, and what we will do to make sure your service without any downtime, we will post your volume engine a little bit and do a snapshot immediately. Usually, snapshot is very quick, quick because it's copy on write, so it's very quick. Just create a new volume hat and the matter current volume hat to be an old one. And new, uh, new replicas in the read only mode because it cannot be read. You don't have a snapshot trend, right? So he, but he, can, he is able to write. And then unpost the engine. Unpost the engine, that means the I.O. can start continuing. And sync a snapshot to the new replica, And set the new replica to rewrite, read and write. So everything is OK. So this is for like a post, new snapshot. And live uh, body head happens. Then right now can begin the uh, write I.O and later sync the snapshot from the healthy replica and become the rewrite. So between the read only and rewrite, uh, you will read throughput will be impact for sure. But after sync the snapshot, everything will go, to, go, go back to normal, okay? Yep, so this is the live migration, uh, what we are doing and when doing the live upgrade. So we will create the the other pair of a new engine and rabbit cards together. So that mean your volume will suddenly have a, if your volume have a two rabbit cards, you will suddenly become the full rabbit card for the migration purpose. But after that, we will do the engine replacement to re replace to a new one, and all one will be get clean. So this for the live migration uh, without any downtime, okay. And this one is disaster recovery. And uh, yeah, because uh, I think uh, as a story solution, you cannot just provide the in-class operation. You need to have a story for out of class, a special disaster recovery. Even for disaster recovery or for other purpose for testing somehow, so long home provide you can back up your volume to external, right? But disaster recovery here is quite different. It, could, it can do an incremental way. So they mean if your source, val source cluster A, he have a part, have ongoing data coming, and you can keep back up to the remote backup target and, and incrementally restore to your destination standby cluster. And until you make it activate, you will start to serve uh, for your workload. So this is uh, important to make the foundation for your uh, volume recovery. Disaster recovery. Okay, so I, I talked about what's a long home and how long home work, primary use case. And right now, I want to share some information about our current uh, status uh, because we run out of time. So this is run replica performance comparison. Uh, uh, left side is a road disk. The middle part is a one four, 
and three more, and the last one is the one five. You will see you will see the one five the performance is getting better than one for a lot, and also Super is is close to the road disk, so the the total change. Okay, how about the three replicas? The three replica, if you compare to the one four, you will see the IOPS and latency getting improved. And also uh, the bandwidth. But you bandwidth, we were curious. What's happening? The read band bandwidth is lower than the current one. Because right now, we are still doing the implementation. We want to do the same behavior to let a read uh, I.O. from the old replica. But right now, it's from the one replica. So we are still doing the implementation. I think it will happen in one file. Yep. So yeah, this is about the long haul, very brief. And I, st I will be still here tomorrow in our kiosk. So if you have any question, you can come to ask and talk about your use case and your feedback about long haul. OK? And oh, sorry, last one. The last one, so the goal, the simply say IO performance and object storage and run anywhere. So this is the goal for, for long haul. We want to make sure we can achieve this goal, okay, including the current stack or the feature stack with SPDK. Okay, thank you. Uh